You dare say to me, welcome! I've already been forced to make an all-night ride from Caesarea a week before the Passover as it is! The Sanhedrin and Caiaphas seem to be ruling the province instead of me! Rome's an embarrassment among the nations, and you say to me, welcome! How many cohorts did I leave here in Jerusalem to keep order in the Passover? Two, sir. Where are they? We sent one with Draconius to secure the city. And the other? Is here to protect Antonia. Protect Antonia. Leninitis, how many years does it take to train a legion? Five. Five years to train the most powerful fighting force the world has ever known. We can conquer Carthage, Gaul, Britannia, Spain, but the two of you cannot keep together a bunch of religious fanatics because of one Jesus of Nazareth. My horse could have done a better job. And to further exacerbate the situation and add to our embarrassment, we have a most distinguished guest in our presence, Lucius Aelius Sejanus. I was about to introduce you as head of the Praetorian Guard, but I understand, Jeffers, we received a dispatch that from Rome that a promotion's in order. Ah, yes. You've been promoted to chief counsel to Tiberius himself. You do us a great honor. I should like to toast you by quoting Tacitus, one of our historians who recently wrote of you, the man who is close to Sejanus is a friend of the Emperor. The Emperor is not pleased. Oh? Word of the ineptitude and incompetence with which this province is being ruled has reached his ears. And no doubt Caiaphas and his toadies have been reporting me for years, but reassure his eminence, the divine Tiberius, that by this time next year, the reasons for said ineptitude will not exist because they're both going to get demoted to galley slaves! Your Excellency, Lady Claudia seeks an audience. Claudia, what brings you here this hour of the night? Yes, but I assure you, it's no concern of yours. It has become my concern. Oh, really? How so? A, a child in the night have written a letter. I've come. I've had a terrible dream because of him this night. I have nothing to do with him. He is innocent. A strange thing, my heart. I'm not aware of any mandate sent from Tiberius, where all of the sudden Jeffers governors are to take orders from their wives. <laughs> I thought not. Pilate, if you condemn this innocent man, Roman justice will be dealt a blow from which it may never recover. Enough! You go too far, Claudia. You always go too far. And if this man can even influence Caesar's daughter, he must be dangerous. Leave us. Now. The 
beware, husband. If you condemn this innocent man, it will be forever recorded throughout history that he has suffered under Pontius Pilate. Women's fantasies. Sentry. Summon Polonius, the foreman of the dungeon. Has the Nazarene been flogged yet? They're bringing him out now. He's already received the fustigatio, a scourging that we give to mild scourging, as a warning to hooligans and scoundrels, which means he's about to receive the verberatio, the most severe flogging that many criminals don't live through? You are correct, Excellency. Has he made any cries? He's made no cry. Lashes? Forty? You've been in Jerusalem too long, my young friend. We don't abide by the law of Moses, but by Lex Romana, law of Rome. Polonius, no limit. No limit? No limit it will be. Whose rotation? I believe it to be Fornius. Summon him. Thank you. Summon Fornius. Fornius! His Excellency Pilate summons you! Ah, oh, yes. Marcus Vinicius Fornius. Your reputation precedes you. The most skilled man in Jerusalem with a flagellum. 
and the most feared. It will be my pleasure, Your Excellency. Jeffers, did you have the sign made I ordered? Yes, pilot. Fetch it, please. Get the sign. Zealots live a dead dream. They live foolishly and die foolishly. They dream of a kingdom that will never come. They have hopes of David or Solomon or Hezekiah coming back, but they even put their faith in this Galilean, this carpenter's son. Jeffers, I want this sign fastened over the head of Jesus. Is that understood? Yes, pilot. I want him crucified in between the two zealot thieves. I want Jesus in the middle. Understood? Yes, sir. As one last jeer at Caiaphas, we will make him step into his own plan. Josephus, you are a slave, are you not? Yes, Your Excellency. Yeah. Isn't the price of a slave these days in Jerusalem, a common slave, 30 pieces of silver? Yes, Your Excellency. Yeah. Lucius Gaius Leninitis, Tribune of Tribunes, Chiliarch of Chiliarchs, Legionnaire of Legionnaires, Pilate's aid in my absence. Did I or did I not hear correctly that this carpenter's son from Galilee, this Jesus who feigns himself, and I can barely bring myself to say it, the Son of God, that he was handed over to the members of the Sanhedrin by one of his own for the price of a common slave? Hmm? Yes, excellent. <laughs> I must say, as out of control as things appear to be, I couldn't have planned it better myself. But now Jesus goes to the cross, though I found no fault in him, and Barabbas goes free to kill more of my officers. Hoyas, how many of my officers are not here tonight? They're dead! And you were close to some of them. Then a night as you were there with me on the stone pavement, I forget what the Jews call it. Gabbatha. Ah, yes, Gabbatha, forgive my insensitivities. I said, shall I crucify your king? To which they retorted. We have no king but Caesar. Ah! Same Jews, when I put emblems of Caesar in their temple, they reported me. So, Janus, we have more trouble with this one Jewish God than we do the thousands in Rome. How does one govern such people? I told them, see to it yourselves. said, I wash my hands of the blood of this innocent man. You know what they said to me, Josephus? His blood be on us and our children. Gentlemen, we must ask ourselves the question, and I fear that the fate of the empire hinges on our reply. What if this Jesus is? Who he says he is? Rome's days are numbered. My days
days are numbered. Jeffress, send a dispatch immediately to His Eminence Alias Lamia, Governor of Syria, requesting that he send the legion that's stationed there post haste to Jerusalem. Tell him that we need the power of the legion to crush this Jewish insurrection once and for all. Is that understood? Yes, sir. Tell him that he will not regret this friend, this favor that he does for his old friend Pilate. When you send out the messenger, send him out by the western gate. The zealots are taking too keen an interest in our operations on the eastern gate. Send out the decoy by the eastern gate. No announcements. No fanfare. Not even a drum. Reassure him we'll have order restored by the end of the week. Understood? Yes, my lord. Tell him that he won't regret this favor he does for his friend Pilate. I'm not going to let a carpenter's son from Galilee come in between me and my ambitions for Rome, Leninitis. Gentlemen, let's proceed to Calvarius and see what happens to those who defy the authority of Rome.
Excellency, Pontius Pilate. Sending me welcome. I've already been forced to make an all-night ride from Caesarea a week before the Passover as it is. The Sanhedrin and Caiaphas seem to be running this province instead of me. The zealots are everywhere, there's an insurrection, and you sending me welcome! How many cohorts did I leave here in Jerusalem to keep order during the Passover this year? Two, sir. Where are they? Draconius was sent with the cohort to secure the city. And the other? Was kept here to protect Antonia. Protect Antonia. No, no, no. How many years does it take to train a legion? Five years, sir. Five years to train the most powerful fighting force the world has ever known. We can conquer Carthage, Gaul, Britannia, Spain. But the two of you cannot keep together a bunch of religious fanatics because of one Jesus of Nazareth. My horse could have done a better job. The time? Close to the end of the third decade. To further exacerbate the situation and add to our embarrassment, we have a most distinguished guest in our presence, Aelius Janus, sent by Tiberius himself. I was about to introduce you as head of the Praetorian Guard, but if my memory serves me well, Jeffers, a dispatch was received from Rome this week that a promotion was in order. You've been promoted to chief counsel to Tiberius himself. You do us a great honor. Two feet. I would like to toast you by quoting Tacitus, one of our historians who recently wrote of you that the man who is close to Sejanus is a friend of the emperor's. Time is running out. The emperor is not pleased. Oh? Word of the ineptitude and incompetence with which this province is being run has reached his ears. No doubt, of course, by Caiaphas and his toadies. They've been reporting me for years, but reassure his eminence, the divine Tiberius, by this time next year, said ineptitude will not exist. Because the reason for it, the both of them, are going to be demoted to galley slaves! Your Excellency, waiting for the six and audience. Claudia, what brings you here this hour of the night? Yes. Yes, but I assure you it's no concern of yours. Close to the end of the third decade of the first century. How so? Place, the fortress Antonia. The Praetorium. The residence of the Roman procurator Pontius Pilate. In the city of Jerusalem. A strange thing, my heart. I'm not aware of any Roman dispatches province. sent from Rome. Jeffers, where all of a sudden governors take orders from their wives? Criminals and prisoners were kept. <laughs> I thought not. Trial or death by crucifixion. Two thieves have already been condemned. Roman justice will be dealt a blow from which it may never recover. Enough! States are in the hands of the Roman governor and the crowd. You go too far, Claudia. The time is running out. You always go too far. And if this man can influence even Caesar's daughter, he must be dangerous. Leave us. Now.
time, Women's close fantasy. to the end of the third decade of the first century AD. Century. Summon Polonius, the foreman of the dungeon. Polonius! His Majesty! The governor summons you! Has the Nazarene been flogged yet? They're bringing him out now. He's already received the fustigatio. Scourging, a mild scourging that we give to hooligans and scoundrels as a warning. Which means he's about to receive the verberatio. The most severe flogging that many criminals don't live through? You would be correct, Excellency. Has he made any cries? He's made no cry. Lashes? You've been in Jerusalem too long, my young friend. We don't abide by the law of Moses, but by Lex Romana, law of Rome. Polonius, no limit. Ooh. No limit. No limit it will be. Whose rotation? I believe it to be Fornius. Summon him. Lucius Gaius Fonius, your reputation precedes you. The most skilled man in Jerusalem with the flagellum, and the most feared. It will be my pleasure, Your Excellency.
Jeffers. Do you have the sign made I ordered? Yes, pilot. Retrieve it. These zealots live a dead dream. They dream of a kingdom that will never come. They have aspirations of a David or a Solomon or a Hezekiah returning. They live foolishly and they die foolishly. They put all of their hopes in this carpenter's son. Here's what we're going to do. Make sure this sign is fastened over the Nazarene's head. Understood? I want Jesus crucified in the middle between the two thieving zealots. It will be one last jeer at Caiaphas. I'll make him walk into his own trap. Josephus, you are a slave, are you not? Yes, Your Excellency. Yeah. Isn't the price of a slave these days in Jerusalem a common slave? Thirty pieces of silver? Yes, Your Excellency. Yeah. Lucius Vinicius Leninitis. Tribune of tribunes. Legionnaire of legionnaires. Chiliarch of Chiliarchs, Pilate's aid in my absence. Did I or did I not hear correctly that this carpenter's son from Galilee, this Jesus who feigns himself, and I can barely bring myself to say, the son of God, that he was handed over to the members of the Sanhedrin by one of his own for the price of a common slave? I must say, as out of control as things appear to be, I couldn't have planned it better myself. But now Jesus goes to the cross, though I found no fault in him, and Barabbas goes free to kill more of my officers. Boyus, how many of my officers are not here tonight? They're dead! If you were close to some of them. Leninitis, you were with me on the stone table. I forget what the Jews call it. Gabbatha. Ah, yes, Gabbatha. Forgive my insensitivities. I asked them, shall I crucify your king? To which they retorted, We have no king but Caesar. Ah! Same Jews when I put emblems of Caesar in their temple, they reported me. So Janus, we have more trouble with this one Jewish God than we do the thousands in Rome. How does one govern such people? I said, let's see to it yourselves. I wash my hands of the blood of this innocent man. You know what they said to me, Josephus? His blood be on us. On our children. Gentlemen, we must ask ourselves the question. And I feel that the fate of the empire hinges on our reply. Whatever this Jesus is, who he says he is, Rome's days are numbered. My days are numbered.
Jeffers. Send the dispatch immediately to His Eminence, alias Lamia, governor of Syria, requesting that the legion that's stationed there be sent to Jerusalem post haste. Tell him that I need the power of the legion to crush this Jewish revolt once and for all. Understood? Yes, sir. Make sure when you send out the dispatch, send them by the Western Gate. The Zealots are taking too keen an observation on our Eastern Gate. Send out the decoy by the Eastern Gate. No announcements, no fanfares, not even a drum. Phalanxes, short swords, no spears. We draw less attention as possible. And reassure his eminence that he will not forget this favor that he does for his old friend, Pilate. And that I will have order restored in this city by the end of the week. No carpenter's son from Galilee is coming in between me, my ambitions for Rome. What should we do with it? Gentlemen, let us proceed to Calvarius to see what happens to those who defy the authority of Rome.